Welcome back to Square Off. There was a lot of news last week in Arizona's U.S. Senate race. Polls, endorsements, and a new dust-up over the debate scheduled for October 9th. Joining us, our politics panel, Tony Connie of Slingshot Campaigns, former top Biden campaign official in Arizona, and Tyler Montague, a longtime Republican activist. Welcome back to Square Off. So, where to start? How about that endorsement of Ruben Gallego by the Arizona Police Association in a matter of days after they endorsed Donald Trump at the Trump rally in Glendale, the police association president nearly got hauled off the stage he talked so long. <laughs> and we thought, oh, this is interesting. And then we found out why. Ruben Gallego wrote a letter to the D Department of Justice saying that they should drop their efforts to get a consent decree with the city of Phoenix to force the police department to change its ways. Tony Connie, what does Ruben Gallego get out of this? Well, I mean, I'm not saying that's the reason I got the endorsement. The, the, the police... Okay, give me one other reason. Well, they endorsed Greg Stanton. He didn't send a letter. They endorsed Ami Shah. They announced a, a slate of Democrats that they endorsed in this last thing. But Ruben Gallego has previously fought in Congress to get funds to local law enforcement, which he got criticism for among some progressive Democrats for doing so. And so, but I think what he gets out of this is that he is being vocal about the fact that he supports law enforcement. That's it. I think there are some questions that a lot of people have who do think that there are issues that need to be addressed to the city of Phoenix when it comes to the police department about whether or not a consent decree is actually the most effective way to do that. There's been problems in some of these other cities where they've done it. I personally don't know. I don't have an opinion. I'm an expert in it. But I do think that it's like a fair question whether or not that's the appropriate way to handle this. And I think that Ruben just like said where he stood. And the police took a, took a risk and they well, them. Well, he's going to need Republicans, independents, to win a Senate race. Is this a salient issue for Republicans? Oh, they absolutely care about public safety, and this endorsement is big for Gallego. I, I'm even a little more cynical about the police. They know how to read a poll. Ruben is likely to win that race, and so why not be uh, in with the guy that's going to win? And he has done things for them, like uh, oppose the, the DOJ action, and he hasn't been associated with any radical defund the police type movements. Uh, he's a Marine. Uh, it's a, it's kind of a safe endorsement. Well, his base is, isn't some some parts of his base are not too happy with him over this, but maybe there's a trade-off there. Are they going to vote for Lake? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> not sure at this point Donald Trump's going to vote for Lake, but we'll get to that in a minute. Next up, the televised U.S. Senate debate scheduled for October 9th. That is the day early ballots go out here in Arizona. The two sides uh, have agreed to debate, and then Lake called out Gallego and said, hey, we need the Green Party candidate uh, in the debate. He is Eduardo Quintana. He won the Green Party primary as a write-in with 282 votes. He's chair of the Green Party of Pima County. He is far to the left of Gallego. Lake rejects everything he stands for. Why does Lake want him on the stage? Because she wants help. She what, wants what kind help. of help does she get from She Edward wants somebody else to be like, you know, being critical of Ruben Gallego or whatever. You know, I think if we're going to invite somebody to debate, why don't we invite Mark Lamb? Because, you know, she refused to debate Mark Lamb during the primary. So if we're going to invite somebody who doesn't have a chance of winning, let's get Mark Lamb in there. She is just trying very hard to find something that can help her win this race because she's just so unpopular with voters right now that she is polling very, very low, and she's just looking for some sort of a shakeup. This isn't it. This is not going to be the thing that changes it. Isn't this, this kind of a weird kind of rebound for Lake? This is somebody who disagrees intensely with Lake's agenda, Trump's agenda? Uh, yeah, so it's just to split off votes, right? Every, every vote for the Green Party is one less vote for a Democrat. And so if, if uh, uh, she can give publicity to that person, great. If she could be in a, in a debate and have to talk about policy a little bit less because somebody else is splitting the time, great. There, there's no way that she loses by having the Green Party involved in the debate. Does Ruben Gallego have to say yes? Can he, re can he refuse to let this guy in? Yeah, I think he can say no. You think he can say no? Yeah, I don't know if he will. I honestly don't know where he'll come, but I think that like Lake does not have much credibility when it comes to the concept of debating people. In this Should place. he say no? Uh, I, I do think that I would like to see a longer... I like the fact that we'd be able to devote the time to two candidates that have a chance to win. I, I genuinely think that would be important, that the more questions that they are asked by debate moderators is good for voters. Okay. So on I would to say no. 
Uh, you say, on to the polling in this race. You've both uh, touched on it. Three polls last week show Lake trailing Gallego by significant margins. The surprising one was Fox News put, put the deficit at 15 points. Uh, that was a poll of registered voters, I would add. Uh, she's also way underperforming Donald Trump in the, st in the, in the state. Uh, Tyler, do, we, do you believe these polls are accurate? Yeah, yes and no. I, I think the actual race will be closer. I don't think it's going to be as large as the, the margins are now. Uh, but, you know, Martha McSally showed that you can't just hop on Donald Trump's coattails and ride to victory. She finished, if you recall, three or four points behind him. So I think uh, the presidential race will be close in Arizona either way. Uh, and I think uh, that Lake will trail Trump by three, four, five points. So that is some crazy ticket splitting. If you're going to have people voting for Trump at the top of the ballot and then Gallego, I know it happens, but wow. Yeah, I mean, I think it does. It definitely happens. People are always very surprised. I know some people in my personal life are that way, and I don't understand, but that's, you know, the way democracy works. <laughs> they, they can make their, up their own mind. But I think this is one of those situations when it comes to, like, that voters want to vote for somebody that they trust. And I think voters just don't trust her. They've seen what she's done for the past couple of years. They're tired of the election denialism. And one of the challenges that she has is that she has, like, a 94% name ID. Everybody knows who she is. And she went, after she lost, which she says she didn't, the governor's race, she went on every one of these far right wing YouTube shows and said all these crazy things that we're gonna be able to put on TV ads against her. And voters just are tired of her. So she's got a real challenge to win. Okay. A real, real tough spot. I wanna end with a free speech controversy in the city of Surprise this past week. Mayor Skip Hall ordered the arrest of a resident during the public comment period after she commented on the performance of a city official. Let's listen. Here's how that arrest in the council chambers went down. Do not put your hands on me. Do not put your hands on me. Come on out. Do not put your hands on me. That resident suffered bruises. Uh, there is a lawsuit pending. Tyler, do you see any justification for arresting a citizen during comment period? Well, uh, she was commenting on the relevant topic that she said she was going to comment on and staying within the time and, you know, following decorum generally. I, I, think, I think their idea that they can stop somebody from doing that is wrong. It's a, it's a violation of free speech, in my opinion. And we've seen pretty aggressive people in front of the Maricopa County Board. Sure. Um, oh, or yeah, if, if she gets arrested, then all of those people <laughs> should be arrested because... I mean, they had to rebuild the whole board auditorium to deal with these folks, but they, they get their say. It's a fundamental thing in local government. I worked for two cities where, like, you can't really hide from your constituents. You, these council meetings last until people are done talking. Like, it's not like a legislative hearing where they say you've got four minutes total or whatever. Two minutes. And, and, and you've got, you know, and so I do think that there needs to be rules of decorum. I understand the need to want to sort of defend the integrity of people who work for you that are, you know, non-political staff. But there are other ways. I was at a council meeting where the, the man who had, you know, tried to assassinate... Larry Lehman, I was just talking about him the other day. <laughs> you know, like... Tried to shoot out. He showed up at a city council meeting when I was in Phoenix, and they didn't arrest him, right? Like, they were paying close attention to him, but there's other ways to handle this, and I think that... I imagine that they, the mayor probably won't say it, but I bet you he regrets the decision. Yeah, they made a mistake. Got ended there. Tyler Montague, Tony Conley, thanks so much for joining us. Enjoy the Labor Day weekend. Want to remind you of our airtime next weekend. Sunday Square Off airs at 7 a.m., then again at 7.30 if you miss it, after NBC's Meet the Press at 6 a.m. Enjoy the holiday weekend. That's our show for this week. Thanks very much to all of our guests. Thank you so much for joining us. See you back here next weekend for another round of Sunday Square Off. Continue with us and watch now free on the 12 Plus app on these streaming platforms.